Hey YouTube, it's the Test Lead, and today's video is the four pillars of object oriented programming. The four pillars of object oriented programming, or OOP for short, are API. API is an acronym for the four pillars of programming. The acronym stands for abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. These are the four core principles for OOP. This video will cover what is OOP as well as the four pillars of object-oriented programming. First, what is object-oriented programming? OOP is a programming paradigm based on a concept of objects formed as classes. A class is a blueprint to create specific objects. Data can be contained in the form of attributes and properties. Actions can then be performed in the form of functions and methods. One of the main benefits of OOP is reusability. Creating objects from classes is an efficient way to reuse code in different parts of your program. This not only saves you time, but allows for more cleaner and more readable code. Now let's get an example, a car. The object class here is the car. The data, which is the properties and attributes, are the color, model, car speed, and is the car run. Next, the actions. For the actions, we have functions and methods which are buying a car, starting the car, and increasing the car speed. So that's your basic introduction to OOP. Now for the four pillars. First, abstraction. Abstraction means to only show the required information to the user of an object. The user does not need to know the functionality that's happening in the background of an object, who want to call a method or a function and get a desired result. So everything that's happening in the background and how it operates, they don't really care about. They just want to see when they call a method that this result is always going to happen. Example, when a person wants to start their car, all they care about is their car starting. They don't care about all the things that are happening in the background with the ignition and engine. This just may add unnecessary confusion if they didn't know. They just want to push a button or turn a key and then put their car to start. Because of this, car makers hide all the background functionality and it's like you call a method to start your car by either pushing a button or turning the key for ignition. So it's the same concept in extraction. Where you're just pushing a button or turning a key, you're just calling a method. And what's happening in the background is happening in the background you have no knowledge about, but you know the desired result that should come from it. In the code snippet shown on the screen, we're creating a car object and then calling this by car method, passing in color and car model. As we check the output of the by car method, returns the car color purchase was blue. The car model purchase is Benz. The user has no idea what actually is happening in a by car method. They just know that when they call a method, the two lines will be output. The actual method functionality could be either the code on by car or by car example two, and the user will never know because this is hidden and produce the same result. Next, polymorphism. Polymorphism means many forms. So depending on when and where you call a method or a function, it may perform differently. Whether you call it in a parent class or child class, may have different backend functionality for it. This is done through overriding and overloading. Overriding a function from a parent class to a child class, you have the same method signature, which is a parameter list. But inside the child class, you can have different functionality. In our parent class, we have a method called getColor, where we print out the color that we assign to our object. But now we also have a getColor method in our child class. When we call the getColor now, as you can see, it will override the parent get color method and call the child get color method and print out Ben's looks best in white, so we chose white for you. Now, the second part of polymorphism is overloading. Overloading is the same concept where you have a method in a parent class and child class, but this time in a child class, there's a different method signature, which means the parameter list is different. Now, in our child class, our get color method takes in a string parameter. Now, if you go back to our main, and call the get color method, passing in a string, it will call the child method. And if we call get color without passing in a string, it will call our parent method. After that is inheritance. Inheritance focuses on code reusability. You have code that exists in a class already, and then you want to use that code as well as add new functionality. You then create a child class for that and inherit the functionality from the parent class so you don't rewrite all the functionality. An example of this is if you have an animal class. From that animal class, you can create a cat class. A cat is a type of animal. So you think of inheritance as is a relationship where 
a cat is a type of animal. That way we can inherit the functionality from the animal class as well as add specific functionality for cats only. So remember, inheritance is a, is a relationship. A cat is a animal, so we can inherit from the animal class. So the animal class or the main class that has the core functionality can be described as the parent class, the super class, or the base class. And then a cat class, which is inherited from the animal class, can be called the child class, the subclass, or the extended class. Another example of this is if you have a car class, and now you want to reuse the functionality in a new class called Benz, which is a type of car. Remember, there is a relationship. You will have access to all the functionality of the parent car class, as well as the ability to add new functionality. We use the extends keyword in Java to inherit from a class. We added new functionality in this child class to check the mileage. If the mileage is greater than zero, it will print the car is used. Else, it will print the car is new. As we can see, we created a bins object this time, called the buy car method from the parent class, and then called its own check mileage method, which printed out the car is new. And finally, encapsulation. Encapsulation restricts access of the properties of a class to the object that is calling it. In the example shown on the screen right now, the car class has public properties called color, model, speed, and car on. Because these properties are public, anytime a user creates a car object, they can directly change these values. This is not best practice though, because a user can accidentally change the properties. So instead, we should make the properties private. Now if we go back to our main class, we can see there are errors because those properties are no longer accessible to the user of the object. If we want to allow a user to change the value of a property, we choose getter and setter methods. And now our program will print out the color that we've set the card to. And that's it. That's a basic high level explanation of what is OOP, which is object oriented programming, as well as the four pillars of OOP, which is extraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want a video just like this, please click here. If you want to see my most recent video, please click here. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.